Hello everybody, how are you guys? Uh, we're continuing our series on Dallas. We're doing Dallas videos all week. And they will ultimately appear in a book called Joe Ditzel Has Some Problems in Dallas. Now these videos, if you're coming to the channel from, uh, you're just, you've never been to the channel before, just so you know, uh, I'm just making this stuff up off the top of my head. None of this is real. <laughs> and I have to explain that because people, <laughs> people, people don't know. People don't know and then they get upset. They're like, you're just making this stuff up. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> that's why it says parody in the title. <laughs> but, you know, I just want to make sure. So here we go. This is five things that Dallasites constantly have to explain to people from out of town. So let, let's go through them, and then you'll get what I'm talking about. So in Dallas, you are allowed to put a Brahma Bull in as a player in high school football. The reason for it is that in the old days, they never had enough players. And again, we're talking the Wild West days, the very beginning of football in Dallas, they didn't have enough players a lot of times to play the game. Now, what they were constantly forfeiting games, not completing games, seasons would be half baked. So they made a rule that you could put a Brahma Bowl into the game as a player if you were short players. Now, once the high school football became super popular, as it is in Dallas, they kept the rule that you can do that, but only one Brahma Bowl per game. You And they can't be on the line. So, in other words, your high school can put a Brahma Bowl in as a running back, a fullback, quarterback, if you can work that out but it's not usually done that way, or a receiver. No kicking, no line. That you could do. You could put them in as a kicker. There's no rule. But they usually don't do that. It's difficult to get a Bravo Bowl to uh, learn to kick field goals. But they don't put them on the line just for the kid's safety, right? It's just too, it's too close to uh, where the hot action is and somebody could get hurt. But uh, receiver, you know, those guys are all dilettantes anyway. They're all divas. And the Brahma Bull could do that. And then running back, of course, they can use their ability to run as they learned on the high plains of Texas in the old days. Uh, that's when the Brahmas learned to uh, do the fast moves that make for a good running back. But uh, the point is, out-of-towners don't understand what's happening. And it's one thing that people in Dallas have to constantly explain. It gets kind of annoying, but the other thing, the next thing out of the two of the five, that number two is that everything is extra big in Dallas. Everybody knows everything is big in Texas. In Dallas, they're extra big. So if Texas was a large, uh, Dallas is extra large. And it's, it, wasn't a, it wasn't any specific reason to do that. It's just the way that Dallas is. This is why it's hard to explain to people from out of town because they, they say, why? why? For example, where the Dallas Mavericks play, the playing surface of the court is, of course, regulation. The stands inside the arena can accommodate 475,000 people. And people from out of town say, why? And there is no answer. The answer is that Dallas just does things double big, extra large, bigger than Texas big. It's the way it is and will always will be. And they just like things big. And that's why all of the buildings are double sized. The streets are double wide. You know, things are just bigger and you just got to get used to it or enjoy it and have fun. Now, number three is that the the heat of Dallas chili. Dallas chili is a uh, type of chili that was developed on the Wild West days when they were out on the range herding cattle, doing the cattle drives. And it's so hot that people from out of town can't handle it. In fact, there were so many calls for emergency assistance for paramedics coming to pe uh, aid people from Wisconsin and from Illinois and from Wyoming. They tried to eat Dallas chili and they had to be resuscitated by paramedics. 
They had to get the paddles out and get their heart restarted. So because of that, the city changed it. So if you're from out of town, you have to eat a modified version that's not quite as hot. And that's why people get upset when their waiter or waitress asks them if they're a resident. They, because they have to by law, because if you're from out of town, if you're from out of the area, they're protecting you from Dallas chili, which will burn a hole in your stomach and make your brain start to sizzle and fry. They give you a really, it's a, about a 25% heat version of the full Dallas chili uh, heat intensity. So it's for your own safety. And this is the one that I think you're just going to be glad you should be glad that the city took action on it. Uh, and don't don't be upset. Well, what do you mean? What do you mean am I a resident? Don't, don't get all attitudinal on it, okay? Uh, it's for your safety. But again, Dallasites have to constantly explain it. Now, the next thing, number four on the list, is that Dallas will explain distance in time. So if you say, how far is it from Dallas to Austin? They'll say, well, it's uh, X amount of hours by horseback. So not only do they explain distance in time, they'll give you the time it takes, but then they put it in terms of, again, the Wild West. So they'll say, you say, how far to New Orleans? They'll go, well, it's X amount of days by wagon train. See? And they don't even know that they're doing it. And this also harkens back to the original days of Dallas where they would give you the distance in time by different uh, modes of transportation of the of that day and they just continue it now today without even thinking about it so don't get thrown off by that uh, it's just something they do they give you the distance in time not in distance they give you the distance in time but by horseback wagon train cattle drive okay any kind of the older modes of transportation from the mid 1800s and earlier. All right. And the final one that Dallasites constantly have to explain to people from out of town is that the Dallas flag is on everything. The Dallas flag, when you go to a restaurant in downtown Dallas, they don't have white tablecloths. The tablecloth is the Dallas flag. When you go to a barbecue place and you've got barbecue sauce on your face and in your hair and you're trying to get a napkin, all of those napkins will be Dallas flags. When you go to the gym and they've got that stack of towels there, every one of them is a Dallas flag. People are so uh, proud of the Dallas flag that it's everywhere. There's no law. There's no rule. It's just the natural pride of people from Dallas that they put the Dallas flag on everything. And I mean everything, guys. I mean, I, I went down to the Walmart in Dallas. I was trying to get some boxers. All of the, the boxers are Dallas flags. The boxer underwear for guys are Dallas flags. There wasn't any other selection. There wasn't any camo. There wasn't any just black underwear. Dallas flags. Uh, if, you, if, you were to, if you were to have a big wedding for your daughter, if you were a rich guy in Dallas and you wanted to put a tent on uh, on the back forty, and have a have a hoot nanny band in there, and invite four or five hundred of your closest friends to a wedding reception under the tent. That tent, that tent, that giant circus tent, is a Dallas flag. And so people get uh, a little tripped out about it. They're like, "What is this flag that's everywhere?" And and they go, "Come on, man, that's a Dallas flag. What's wrong with you?" And once you understand why, it's because they're so proud of their city and they have a lot of reason to be. And so this video is almost a, um, a tribute to Dallasites because they have to constantly explain this stuff. And I kind of feel bad for them. But Dallas is such a unique and special city that it's a small price to pay, I think, for all of the good things that are there. All right, guys. Well, that is five things that Dallasites are constantly having to explain from out-of-towners. And I would just say, if you're from out-of-town, just roll with it. Just whatever they say, just go with it. You're going to enjoy yourself a lot more. 
If you know any other things that Dallasites constantly have to explain to out-of-towners, leave a comment. Get me on the YouTuber. Get me on the Twitter machine. However you want to do it, because when you share, uh, this whole community grows. Thanks.